You're not asking me, do I eat McDonald's? But then again, he doesn't have to ask me that. He can tell that by my weight. And here's a here's a question, and this kind of gets into conspiracy land. So if I if I'm ignorant in this thought process, just tell me. But do you believe that there's any type of possibility that I mean, one, because we're paying attention to it more, but do you believe that there is an uptick in mental health crisis because of the food? Um, I definitely think it, 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 um, it affects, you know, I, I, I think that number one, anything that you're putting into the system that is addictive affects mental health and look at what's in the food, sugar. Sugar is more addictive than anything that's ever touched the planet. Yeah. It's also more successful than anything that's ever touched the planet. Ever. So, I mean, sugar, it, sugar's history is worse than coffee's history. When I told you about really? that slavery and murder, hell yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the whole the whole reason of canalizing the whole whole thing that Jamaica and the Caribbean exported was sugar. Wow. That whole that's what all that's about. Working the sugar cane fields. Hmm. So it's it, 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 it's 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 brutal, bro. Like when you really get into this shit, you know, the only thing that is close in our history that I can cite history that is as bad as sugar that is to the point where we have pictures of it is rubber. Really? Yes, that's what Leopold was doing to Africans. And it was about uh, the, the, the 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 um the 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 industrial boom. We needed rubber for tires. Right. So he went into Africa, tapped rubber trees. If you didn't do enough stuff, he cut you. If you looked up uh, the atrocities of King Leopold, I think it is, you'll see African kids with hands chopped off because he would chop your hands off if you didn't do your work. Hmm. Like, it's, the shit is brutal, bro. Everything is, everything is brutal. Everything is disgusting. Wild. Yeah, King, King Leopold, that's, I'm not saying that's the uh, fucker over Germany. Hmm. I think it's Germany. You have to look it up and tell me, but I think it's, I think it's Germany. Yeah, chopping off slave hands. That shit killed uh, the Holocaust killed, what, 900,000 people? King Leopold killed like 4 million. Jesus Christ. That's what I'm be trying to tell niggas is like it, life is not what you think, bro. And then you think, oh, well, you know street drugs. No, you know the first no. time opioids had a problem? Tell me. The first time opioids had a problem was with um Drinks, mm. pep drinks. I think they have a name for oh, it. Co- like the Coca Cola thing when they was putting cocaine in it back in the day. Right. So co- that is a, is the back end of a bigger problem. If you okay. look it up, niggas was they were putting fucking these little drinks that kind of look like this, and it'd be like mm-hmm. a tonic. And the reason that the Surgeon General has to put everything put these warnings on shit is because of those drinks. It didn't become a problem. They were giving it to the dock workers. To keep them going to work longer hours. The problem is they took it home and started giving it to white wives. Mm. Oh, like the Quaalude era. <laughs> <laughs> the Quaalude era is like 50 years later, but yeah. Uh, okay. So back in 1905 and all that type of shit, they were giving mm. these drinks to their wives because they were complaining about being tired and doing housework. And mm. they would come home and their fucking wife is an OD because what was the main thing in there? Morphine. Oh, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, morphine was in that. And then a German yeah. a German scientist synthesized morphine into heroin. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it now. It was the 19th century opiate epidemic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's 100 years ago. We're acting like this shit is new. Yeah, it says, it says thousands of Marylanders have died from opioid overdoses in recent years with the surge of deaths from fentanyl, but our present-day opiate epidemic has a Victorian precursor. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, Marylanders died from overdosing on laudanum? Latinum, laudanum. It's hard to say. Yeah. And that's basically... It's a mixture of opium and alcohol. Jesus Christ. They were fucking... They were trailblazers. Yeah. Oh. Available at local pharmacies. It was used to treat insomnia, headaches, menstrual cramps, colic, mm. and colic and babies. Bro, come on. You're giving that shit to kids, bro. What? Yes, man. Yeah. So this whole addicted to shit thing is it man, that's nothing, man. Drivers in the in drivers in the uh 60s, 70s, and early 80s were drinking meth 
as truck drivers, so, bro. Liquid meth. So check this out. It says the Share it. value of, of opium and morphine trade more than doubled between 1898 and 1902. Oh. It went from being a million dollars to 2.56 million. So if we adjust that for inflation, it's crazy numbers. Let's let me I want to see what that number is. Okay. That number is we're gonna do two point we're gonna do two point fifty six million. Twenty five six seven two fifty six thousand two thousand two yeah okay that's enough zeros uh in nineteen oh two billy it gotta be a billy let's see what that is that is oh Jesus uh that equivalates now to basically ninety three million dollars and they were okay that's trade so that's a year yeah per year ninety three million dollars a year. Right. And that and the truth is in those trades, you can't trace the money for real. We don't know how much they were making off that. Right. Not to mention, yeah, that's not, that's just that's just what was documented. Not the not the cash document. hand. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I is, mean, you know, that is why when you look at these oof. dystopian movies, they do a throwback of the guys selling snake oils. Yeah, the the, yeah, the that was the miracle a man and the doctors yeah, no. and oh, I can heal your ailments and all mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. All that type of shit. That type of shit. Is a precursor because that was a real thing. They were mother was coming in telling you this this tonic that fixes all, and that shit had fucking opioids in it. Jesus, they're telling you basically opioid juice. It's wild. They were throwing that shit in their wives were throwing that shit in their coffee and then bugging <laughs> out while their old man was at work, tweaking at nine o'clock in the morning. Tweaking, bro, it's insane. Cleaning the whole house, bro. <laughs> 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 Cleaning oh that is nuts dude everything they give to niggas because remember they were giving this to niggas on the dock for them to work longer they were so, giving it to mexicans to work in the field longer and then they said oh this shit really does work and they gave it to their wives so that makes me think that makes me think this is where my mind goes with it so how much of that do you believe contributes to the success of the traditional home because that's where it started um see i don't the reason the traditional home the success of the traditional home back then had nothing to do with that it was the truth is there was no other option then that's why it was successful because at that time we're talking women could only do two jobs they could Mm. only women went to college then Mm -hmm. to be a secretary and that's damn near all they could do so you would go and be a secretary. And when you get married, your job's done. You can't work. Right. Then on top of that, if your old man was a piece of shit, it was illegal for you to divorce. You couldn't get a divorce as a woman. Mm. Then. When they say, oh, they didn't leave. Nigga, they couldn't leave. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't leave. Well, where the fuck are you going to go? Yeah. So if you did end up type somehow getting away, you got to understand too, legal then we're allowed to whoop them with a belt. That's oh, the that law. It's on. It's on record in most states. Mind you, we don't. We don't endorse that. We don't endorse it at all. Put it out there that we we are not with with putting the hands on nobody. Just you know, relax. So when the people say, "Oh, it was so much better back then," they're saying that through a rose colored lens. Did families keep? Were we able to keep track of lineage better? Yes. Were we able to keep track of uh of uh of uh what do you pass down? What do they call it? We inheritance. Yes. yes. Were we able to keep all that shit good? Yeah. But another thing they're not discussing, too, a lot of them kids wasn't the fathers because there was no way to test for that back then. So the milkman, which was a thing. Jeez, back then, not on, the milkman. Milk Come on, the milkman was beating not them the cheeks. Not the barber's dairy. The milkman was beating them <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> he was dropping off two white substances. Jesus Christ! Where's the where's the fire alarm? <laughs> Give me a sound effect on that. Dude, one. The milkman, Jesus Christ! Dude, I got I got names of shit that they these kids won't even think about. The milkman, the washing machine fixing man, the Maytag man too. The Maytag man was tagging that oh, ass. Oh my God! What about the refrigerator? What about the um, Ice Man? Nigga, he was getting them jigs. Oh my God! The Ice Man, the plumber. The, the regular general handyman. So let's say the handyman looks like you, or he's. Yeah. Let's, see, let's say you got a wife, and I'm the Maytag man. Right, right. Are you really going to be able to tell? There's me and you're the same complexion. Hey, mm. Oh, he's taller, and you're thinking, "Hey, well, my uncle was tall." Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's funny because I have I do have tall people in my family. That's hilarious. So, <laughs> so I don't drop that thing off. 
And that's a wrap. Oh, that's sick. And that's a wrap. Oh, and, and, and my thing is, what can you do? There was no child support then. That wasn't invented. When okay, when was and I gotta find out when was child support I, created? I'm gonna say around about the time child support became a bigger thing around the time of prohibition because niggas leaving their families and fucking bitches and beating up on bitches was why prohibition came to be. Right. So you're it's probably gonna say something like in the 20s or 30s. Let's see. It's, Insurance. Oh, it's actually okay based on how it is now. This started back in 75. Like it, it loosely existed before that between 18 and 18, federal 18, law, 20, probably. But yeah, the real, like the we gonna get you child support, 75. Mm. Pressure. That is of wild. Course. And that makes sense because how could there be a bunch of child support when bitches weren't allowed to leave? Right, right. So what oh, doing- Jared said the insurance man. The insurance man <laughs> was insuring that ass. Oh my yes. god. <laughs> so when when he when we have to be careful on the times we try to cite back to that we're better. Yeah. Then that we're better, that we just know what was supposed to, what was supposed to happen. A large portion of these people, well, my people stayed together for 60 fucking years. The truth is there were less so societal options for you. So of course they did. That was the best course of action Hmm. that was the best course of action yeah because i I think back to like you know my grandparents and i've heard similar stories from from people in their generation how they got either married in high school or right right out of high school and just stayed together it's just like and a lot of them a lot of them yeah uh, a lot of them married older people because they were there was no age thing right right well, a lot my, of chicks my grandfather was, right my my grandfather was was out and going into the uh military because he got drafted right when they got married but she was graduating high school there you go and what do you do you just i want to get married your parents sign off on it get the fuck out of here y'all for my books well they didn't they went to alabama and eloped but that's a whole other story <laughs> <laughs> went to the middle of the devil's work <laughs> So, so my thing is, yeah. we talk about how things were better back then. They'll say, "Oh, well, truckers made more money back then." We're also talking about a time where truckers could run illegal. Yeah. So paper, are we not going to factor in the fact they were double booking? Yeah, that paper log stuff was different. So that's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. So when a guy comes to you and says, "Oh, well, truckers made a hundred in 1985, drivers yeah. made a hundred thousand dollars," they're also running two load books. Yeah. Two hours, two uh, uh time clocks. Yeah. Of course, they were making double. They were working double. That's a fact. So get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. It's not as cut and dry as they want to make it. Yeah. So when you say, oh, well, you know, modernization, it hurts. Yeah, some things hurts, but some things it does. It, it's, it's, it's different as well, too. Me and you are able to conduct the show from our house. Do you understand how many buttons were involved in a show in 1950? There were some oh, computers around oh, thousand buttons on them for them to do what we're doing right now not even that just the 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 staff you needed to run that stuff like you need to this what we're doing right now we would have we would need 10 people a piece to do this 20 and 30 years ago 10 people a piece we would need industrial power to, into the building to oh, run that equipment God. and then we would have to have the license to even put it on the airways which we were not going to get because of this right at the best, at the best we could have done in those days would have been a, a radio show on one of them bootleg stations. You know, one of the bootleg stations that a white person would have owned. Right. And they would have owned all the recordings of our show. WKLB coming to you live, you know. <laughs> your, your contract says right there, every single thing made on KLB is 100% owned and have the rights to KLB. Exactly. So when you stop working, you just died broke. Mm-hmm. You didn't get to shop your shit around and all that. Yeah. It's all bullshit, bro. Shit sure didn't not- have the masters to the shows. <laughs> no. When people are saying it was better back then, they're white. Mm. And the truth is, it wasn't. Or it wasn't even better for white people. People were dying at 40 years old. Mm. No one talks about the life expectancy of the 40s. Yeah. What well, let's let's figure that out real quick. You know? No, we knew we knew nothing about hygiene. We knew nothing about what smoking did. We knew nothing about what drinking did. We knew nothing about what food did. 
the average expected age life is the average life expectancy age was between 61 and 65 in 1940. That is insanity. Versus today, you know, average average age expectancy given, you know, relatively good health is about 80 years old. Come on. If you now. get more than that, you know, you're winning. <laughs> Dude, people always people always cite the plague. You know what killed more people than the plague? What's that? Diarrhea. Hmm. What you mean? Diarrhea. Really? Yes. Diarrhea kills millions of people now. Something you can fix with uh, with with a pink fluid. Diarrhea was diabolical. Niggas just shit themselves to death. Jesus. <laughs> so no, I mean I'm looking at the statistics right now. It says it's the second leading cause of death for children under five now. What do you think that was in 1800? Get out of here, dog. Diarrhea take you out. I mean, my God, the loose butt. Like, the loose butt. Terrible. That is such a horrible way to. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at. Okay, so it said in some areas such as Sweden, dysentery was 90% of the reason people died. Right. It was and a major cause of death between 1800 and 1870. Right, because these, these people live before uh, pasteurizing shit. No one oh pasteurized milk. They were drinking raw milk and God room temperature raw milk. Ugh. The dickens on a stick ball truck. <laughs> I mean, that just sounds so bad, <laughs> bro. Like, I mean, milk is already terrible, which I don't, I don't drink real oh, milk it's anymore. Disgusting, but it's bro. just like, my God. That's a terrible way. I mean, because I, like I said, I'm, I'm not to be TMI. I, I'm lactose. So I already deal with them issues. Most of these niggas like, are too, right? You, you know, you're like, you're not supposed to be drinking. That's for their baby. That's what. Yeah, be, I mean, a lot of cultures don't drink milk like that. No, I mean, for me, I can't, and it's you know, it's the American of me. I can't let go of cheese, but everything else, I've had no problem right. getting off of. We we cannot let go of the Frankenstein fluid of cheese the, the thought <laughs> process of cheese is insane oh my god i mean it's disgusting when you really break if it down you really break just... down how cheese is made oh it's so nasty bro. and then the fact is 90 percent of the cheese you're eating ain't cheese and right it's it's so that shit some you good see on cheese that's just drooling off of shit that is not cheese bro <laughs> like real organic cheese, bro. We, not we're not that. supposed to be able to melt it in the microwave or just leave it out At and all. still be in the same form. Like it's no. just, oh my god, we're so no, terrible. No, I mean, dude, oh. when you see a pizza and it's stringing like that, dude. Oh that, dude, my something god, else. have you ever seen? Uh, uh, have you ever seen how they make chain pizza, dog? Mm -mm. Oh my god, it's a conveyor system, like, bro. Okay, yeah, the the guy in the shop. Shout out to them because they be holding it down. The guy in the shop, he spins the dough, he rolls it, he does the season and all that good stuff. But when it hits that that oven belt to be ready in 10 minutes, bro, okay, it comes in. He's already put the base layer of sauce on it, and the machine sneezes cheese onto it. <laughs> it happens, dog. It's the oh, it's sick. It is sick, bro. Dude, dude, I you're talking to a person. Who pulls up to the back end of the back end? Have you ever been to the back end of the back end of Tyson? No, now, I've only ever been to the reefer side. dude. So you've been to the yeah, pack side, right? I've been on the pack okay. side. I ain't ever been on the on the on the processing side. So what they do is they take it, they cut it up, package it, and put it in your truck. Right. Mm -hmm. Then that skeleton with tendons and all that shit. Yeah. They throw Carcass. that into an, another another machine, right? And okay. then a, a, a pipe about this big spits it spits out this byproduct of it uh so when i'm hauling hopper most of the time if i'm not grain hauling i'm yeah. hauling byproducts of shit that has already been on y'all truck uh that's they'll, call, they'll call it something like fish meal yeah so it's mean, all the shit, shit you don't want I've, out of fish i've hauled i've hauled the non-consumable of chicken and that is oh god it's disgusting because i've taken it to, to dog food plants and it's just like and that's what that's what that's what uh, 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 uh most of the time a hopper dude is hauling so they spit that out yeah dude, i haul the byproduct of beets oh that's stank and i i mind you i i live in a rural area so i've been to the beet plants and it's oh beet, god beet pellets and they uh, send that somewhere. I've hauled the byproduct of wheat. Really? What is that like? After they smash wheat to death and they make whatever they make out of it and the shit they throw in the trash can, I pick it up and take it somewhere. And they get really? to 
Huh. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's some nasty. I, I've sat behind Tyson's and that when that shit comes out, man. And Whew. then it's in my truck for days during the summertime, covered by a tarp. Oh. So then when I lift the tarp up to drop it to where it's going, that's I mean, it's it's cooked and firm. Oh, oh God, brother. It's brutal, man. Brother, ew. <laughs> it's, 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 What's that, brother? <laughs> it's dude, if you're ever near my truck, oh. you're gonna have a bad day. Oh my because God. if you open your door, the smell the flies, bro. Yeah, you're cooked. So I've seen flies. I've opened my door at Tyson's and closed it and had nine flies in my truck. <sighs> Man, listen. They're ducking the smell. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. And that's Jesus. the shit. And then you say, oh, well, is the food fucking us up? Dude, they know the food. Dude, seven things in your meal is illegal in the UK to give to a human. So when you go eat McDonald's in the UK, mm -hmm. it has seven ingredients that isn't allowed in that country that we eat here. Really? Uh, let's see. I want to know what they are. Okay, UK banned ingredients. Uh, okay, this is stuff. I don't even know what this is, bro. It says eat it every day. Pot potassium bromate, Sudan dyes. Certain drugs used on animals, such as bovine growth hormone, and I know they use that crap mm. in chicken. Oh, yeah. Uh, brominated vegetable oils, chlorine treated poultry. That's something else I know about because I've hauled the chlorine into the mm -hmm. places. Uh, ro yeah, rhodamine dash B. I don't know what that is. And something I can't pronounce called azo azodicarbonamide. And I don't even know what that is. All I science wanna, bullshit. What the heck is that? I, I need to know what this is real quick here. What the heck is this? Okay, it says it's a chemical substance approved for use as a whitening agent in cereal flour and as a dough conditioner in bread. But come on, and you're giving they're it dying, shit. they're dying the Cheerios, dog. And you're giving that shit to your child. Oh my god, and you're wondering why this little fucking maniac is fucking nuts, right? He's a freaking five year old terrorist, like. And he can't sit down. And then, then when he gets to school, they they yell at him because he can't sit down. And now, and now because he's tweaked out of his mind, they want to give him Ritalin. And they want to give him Ritalin on top Percocets and Ritalin. Oh. And uh, Jesus Christ, bro! Like, Jesus Christ, bro! Bro, <laughs> okay. sick, you didn't, you didn't say it was in steaks. You said it was in cereal. And who is the predominant yeah. eater of cereal? Children. Children, <laughs> like. And now they're telling you that you don't know why your five-year-old is big as a bodybuilder. You don't know why this fucker right. is 400 pounds. Why he's emotionally unstable, having full meltdowns on the game. Like, it's just so angry. He's freaking nuts, running around shooting people in the head with a Renetti, and you don't yeah. understand it. Yeah, That shit is crazy, bro. That shit is... Another thing that killed a bunch of people was uh, non-sick pans. Mm, yes, the, the chemicals saying, and the non -sticks. They're saying that chemicals in every waterway in America. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've done a little bit of done a little bit of plumbing work in the past, and yeah, it's some it's some wild stuff going on, man. And just I mean, not even just from the, the aspect of, of of being essentially poisoned. I mean the stand the lack of standard when it comes to our drinking water supply, bro. Like, do you know that? <laughs> in a lot of America, they still have clay pipes in the ground, bro. I believe it. Or they have, you know, they have lead-based steel pipes in, in a lot of America mm -hmm. that are going to people's homes. I believe it. You know? Oh, shit. We, you know, I've lived near fracking, man. I've seen one video of a dude oh. who just turned on his sink and lit the water on fire. Oh, my God. And his kids are bathing in that shit. <laughs> That's sick. Just turn on the sink and lit the freaking water on fire. Wow. Insanity, bro. That is crazy. Insanity. Bro. Not to mention, <laughs> oh, I, I feel every day, every day I feel so bad for the people in Michigan. Like, bro, they haven't went. I don't even know if they ever had clean drinking water. Probably never did. Like. They probably never yeah. fucking did. Do fluoride is a fucked up history. That's oh. it. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a fuck fluoride and all the shit is bad, bro. My like, oh, don't swallow it. Why am I putting this in my mouth? Dude, all the shit is bad when you think of how they were promoting cigarettes to children. Ugh, the Marble. candy cigarettes. 
Marlboro Man. Oh. I mean, Bugs Bunny used to smoke a cigarette. No, nah, I never saw that. That's crazy. Yeah, he walks up. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a meme. He says, walk out. Watch the game uh, uh, Bugs Bunny got. And he says, oh, my God. Walks up. How you doing? What's going on? Roll a cigarette in one thing. Hit it in one puff. Howdy, bitch. Oh, yeah. you're, I forgot that happened. Yes. yes, I have seen that. And Tom and Jerry did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know what? You know what? That was Tom. That was Tom. Yeah. That was the cat yeah, that I've did seen- that. Right, yeah, yeah that was, and that's also Tom and Jerry is uh, historically horribly racist. Oh my god, Bugs Bunny is really racist, bro. Oh, very, very blatantly too. Especially oh if you ever god. see some of the early cartoons from like the the ones they made back in like the forties and stuff like that. Right. Oh my god, the dude who made up Disney was a Nazi. Oh yeah, no, that dude's a, yeah. Bro, if you ever see uh, that dude, all of that menace, old bro. Disney shit is fucking racist, bro. All of that yeah. shit. That's why yeah. I tell you, the history of everything is just fucked up, bro. If, if and the truth is, the people that are listening to this that don't think in this way, dude, you're just sheep. You're you're just sheep. But when I tell you, when, when I always say this, the people who do the best in trucking are dumb. And I mean that. No, that's a fact. And the truth is, I'm not hating on them. I'm just saying the dumber you are, or let's, let's not use something inflammatory. Naive. But the more naive and uninformed you are, the better you're doing trucking. Yeah. If you're someone naive. who pushes back, they retaliate against you. Like if you, it, someone who's the perfect driver is the the company driver that just shuts up and drives a truck. You're not worried about business. You're not worried about rates. You're not worried about you know what the next driver's opinion is or, or how the next driver's getting more money than you. Allegedly, it's just <laughs> you just you go to work. That guy's winning, bro. Yeah, because for my career, here's here's what I should have done after I went to private school to get my class A. Say that I'm about to get something to drink. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. After I went to private school to get my class, say uh, here's what I should have done. Trucker Brown here. I'm just here to remind you that we are on Patreon and it does help out the channel. Thanks to all the people who sub to the Patreon this weekend. I appreciate you. New content is coming there. And these clips that I'm giving you are from the exclusive Trucker Report Live that I do with Phil, which is linked at the bottom on Rumble TV Uncut. So I appreciate y'all. Love the support. If you like the content, man, hit the buttons. Let me know. Thanks for coming to the Patreon.